I didn't understand, but someone uh, told me when I was asking about uh, that English seemed to be more prominent than the native language of Tagalog, is they told me that uh, this was, uh, well, the word they used was a colony of the United States for 50 years up until World War II, the end of World War II, and I didn't realize that, so that's why there's such a, um, you know, this place is so uh, dependent on English and that many of the classes are taught in, or most of the classes are taught in English, the textbooks are in English. So that explains why uh, this is probably a good place to uh, to go for Americans. You know, though, uh, you know, obviously, it's a third world country, uh, Question about questions about safety, and of course, with the bad global economy, you know, Philippines uh, has been hit hard, just like the rest of the world. The nice thing about the uh, the Philippines compared to uh, the other places is the dollar goes very far, and. Uh, um, you know, you can, for a thousand dollars, you can spend a lot of days here, where even with a few hundred dollars, you can't. Whereas uh, the other places I've gone with poker stars, it seemed like the dollar wasn't worth very much. Monaco, uh, the Bahamas, and uh, and London, you know, everything is expensive. And for poker players, there are lots of card clubs. You know, you saw that I, the Met, I went to the Metro, which they said was the largest one in Asia. Uh, there were several other poker clubs, and uh, uh, they really enjoy their poker here. That's uh, that's for sure. And initially, um, you know, I felt neglected at the airport, but because uh, I screwed up. Oh, they told me that there was a guy with a Hyatt sign waiting for me, but it didn't have my name on it because, for safety reasons, they didn't want to let people know where I was staying. So, that's why I didn't see my driver at the airport. Um, I might as well discuss my bust out hand. Um, and one thing I want to say, I, I went bust out with nines against ace, queen of spades. Actually, there was nothing to discuss. Uh, at that point, I had about 15 big blinds I raised in, and got re-raised and, the, you know, put the chips in. Um, and, you know, I could say, oh, well, you know, I got in with a race, but I don't know of any tournament I play. You know, you always hear these people talk about having bad luck. I almost never think maybe a, a final hand or something, a bad luck. I had a couple hands where people hit flushes on me, but as long as I do things that where I should have done something else, then I, I never... I never claimed to have bad luck because I always say that well, that screwed things up and that was certainly the case here and just about every event I've ever played um, you know I blame myself not uh, not the cards for the result and so here, here was the dumb thing I did this particular tournament um, some guy was limping a lot and uh, whenever he did in late position with any excuse I'd raise him and try to isolate him and uh, I doubled up uh, where I had obvious good luck, I flopped top set against top two fair and had the guy drawn dead. So I had decent chips. And uh, so I wanted to play aggressively, try to build a big stack. So the guy'd limp, I'd raise. You know, sometimes I'd take a take the pot down, sometimes I didn't. But on this one particular hand, uh, I king deuce of hearts where he'd limped and I'd raise and isolated. The flop came ten, five, three different suits. I bet the flop and he called, and at this point I had raised him so many times. He called like he was just tired of me call, uh, raising him, and he was kind of grasping to, to you know, try to hit something. I didn't think he had anything. And uh, a 10 came on the turn, and I really felt like he would have raised me on the flop if he had had a 10. So when he checked, uh, I bet 1,000 on the flop, and I bet uh, 2,500 on the turn. And... Uh, he called, and again, I thought he might have raised me with three tens. He's the kind of player who, uh, to this point, when he had something, had played his hands pretty quickly. So, uh, 
there wasn't really a draw up there, so I figured he must have a small pair or something. And, uh, you know, I had to make sure he couldn't call on the river. And a queen came on the river. You know, obviously I was hoping a king would come, but even so, the queen, I just felt if I, fi if I you know, fired all in, I thought he probably had about 10,000 left uh, from my memory of how much he had in chips. But he had all the chips in his hand. They weren't on the table. And uh, um, so when he checked me on the river, I said, I've just got to bet. I guess I have to put the guy all in and put him to the test. And I looked, and I, and I, I said, how much do you have left? And he just said, just these. And he showed me in his hand. And it only looked like about three or 4,000. And uh, I'd bet 5,000 the last time. And so I said, well, I don't know what the guy has. Uh, you know, came, remember, it came 10 5 3. He could even have like ace deuce or ace 4. And, uh, you know, I had to bet him off the ace high if he had that. Uh, you know, and he's a guy who was capable of even limping with an ace jack. He limped with a lot of hands. So I said, I'm just going to set the guy in. But now they only had th three or 4,000. I thought there was too good a chance he'd call me, but I felt I had to do it anyway. Because um, if he couldn't check raise all in, you know, maybe he'll think the better of it and give it up on the river. So I bet 5,000 enough to set him in. But what happened, and here comes the dumb part, the $5,000 chips, the yellow chips, looked about the same shade. They were light yellow as the $100 white chips. And when they are all shuffled in different colors in his hands, I just didn't see that he actually had two $5,000 chips. And he really had about twelve or 13000 in front of him. So now he hemmed and hawed and then finally selected a $5,000 chip out of the the, the mess he had in his hands and he gave me a crying call with ace three at flop bottom pair and he called me and so it was really disgusting because I would have bet 15,000 if I knew that he had 12 or 13,000 in front of him and put him to the test now maybe he was just going to hope I had something like ace jack or ace king and call me but it's much easier for him to call with 7,000 behind than it is if I put them all in and so that pot or that decision of not bluffing for enough on the river probably cost me uh, what I'd, I'd bet like 10,000 the hand he already had about 5,000 in before the final call like a 15,000 chip swing it got me down to we'd started with 20 I'd, I'd been up to 30 uh, that got me back down to 20 instead of uh, uh, you know 35 I guess and so uh, um, I, I seem I seemingly never recovered from that you know it obviously changes the play after that, you know, once you start getting short, once you don't have people covered, it, it drastically changes things. So, um, the moral of the story, uh, now someone who's a, a whiner would say, well, he shouldn't have had the chips in his hand. Uh, they should be clearly on the table so you can see what the denominations are. Well, that's what the type of person who likes to blame other people for their mistakes says. But I actually had a good feeling for about how much he had in chips, and it was really surprising to me that he ended up with less than 5000 at this point after my $2,500 bet on the turn, my 2500 chip bet on the turn. And I should have just realized it didn't make sense. I, I you know, need to know beforehand start how many chips the people in front of me have. So that's just a clear mistake on my part. And so the fact that eventually I got unlucky on a couple hands and I lost a race is... Uh, you know, those are things I can't really control, but this was something I could control. I screwed up, and as a result, right before the end of day one, I got knocked out. So um, you know, I only have myself to blame, and that's why we're on the way to the airport.